In the past, many of our, our local artists have worked with us to create the Art of Caring Award. And we've always been inspired through their artistry. Each presented their creative vision through beautiful paintings and ceramics, sculpture, woodcuts, poetry, stained glass, and tribute to our Art of Caring Award winner. There's perhaps no group of people in our society who greater appreciate beauty that is around us than the artist. They record our world on canvas and in their words of poetry and in their art. The Art of Caring is a tribute to the imagination and generosity of our Legacy Society members. As a way to honor philanthropists who receive the award, artists are commissioned specially to create individual awards to honor the generosity of our patrons. This year, the Art of Caring Award is created by Timothy Callahan, a contemporary painter who lives and works in Cleveland. Tim moved to Cleveland in 1994 to study painting and received his BFA from Cleveland Institute of Art in 1999 and his MFA from Kent State University in 2005. Since 2006, he has taught painting, drawing, design, and color theory at the Cleveland Institute of Art, Oberlin College, and the Cuyahoga Community College. Tim's painting depicts modern American Midwest landscapes. And this year is a very special year because Mr. Busta's son, William, and his wife, Joan, who owned the William Busta Gallery, have exhibited Tim Callahan's paintings and knew that their dad was a big fan of his. The painting here depicts one of the very first homes built by Mylon Busta. And just as Mike created this sturdy home with a sound foundation that still stands today, he has also been motivated by what's in his heart, a desire to help others by building a lasting legacy in our community. So Timothy Callahan is with us tonight and is joined by his wife, who is also an artist, Krista Tomarovich. Tim, would you please stand and be recognized for your work for Mr. Bus? In the past, we've also presented smaller versions of the Art of Caring Award to you, our guests. And you can find the picture within your program. The program unfolds in a variety of ways. There is also the uh, many quotes in there from a variety of people who send their accolades and their tributes and their thank yous to Mylon Busta for the different charities that he has uh, been kind to and has uh, put some support in. We know that Mike is special and is a living testimony that one can do good while doing well. Our award is simply and perfectly named the art of caring and is indeed an art as the plastic arts are. It is a description that certainly fits the award recipient, Mike Busta. Mike excels in the grace of giving. He holds generosity as a value by choosing to give his time, talents, and treasures to the service of others. And he is making our community a better place. In addition to regular old cash contributions to charities, he feels so strongly about the necessity of giving back that he, he opened 20 charitable gift annuities. Mike has channeled the last six gifts through the Community West Foundation, and we are very honored that he trusts Community West Foundation to hold these annuities and to fulfill his philanthropic intention. In describing his reasons for starting charitable gift annuities, Mike told us that in 1997, he heard a radio ad from the Cleveland Orchestra about this type of giving vehicle. After discussing it with his wife, Jean, he called the orchestra and started his very first one. He thought it was a good idea, it was something meaningful, and the rest, as they say, is history. Philanthropy comes naturally to Mike and spans all areas of community life. He has an appreciation for the richness of our community's arts and culture, offering his support with two charitable gift annuities to the Cleveland Orchestra. He has one for the Music Settlement, who today came and played so lovely for him as a tribute to his 14 years on the Board of Directors, and now he's the Emeritus Board Member of the Music Settlement. The Cleveland Museum of Art thanks him for 20 years of being on the Board of Directors, and he has a gift annuity to them and to the Beck Center for the Arts in beautiful Lakewood, Ohio. 
Mike has great passion for educational institutions, and he has established annuities for places of learning and opportunity. John Carroll University, where Mike is from the class of 1943. Muskegon University, and two for the Ohio State University. <laughs> Health and wellness will benefit Mike as well. Lakewood Hospital Foundation is the recipient of an annuity, the North Coast Health Ministry, and Hattie Lollum. Faith-based institutions in our community will receive support as well. Two charitable gift annuities for the Catholic Community Foundation, St. Bernadette's Church, Borromeo Seminary, and the Salvation Army. If that's not enough, we have community development that needs to be enriched and encouraged in our community through philanthropy. The Gardeners of Greater Cleveland, the Business Advisors of Cleveland, where he's been with them for 24 years, and the record holder, the Lakewood Rocky River Rotary Club for 26 years, and the past president in 1994 and 95. I know that he's passed the four-way test. <laughs> Mike's charitable acts are quite remarkable in their range and generosity. He enjoys being an active donor, one who gives his time and money to organizations he believes in. We need more philanthropists like Mile and Busta. Mike is as active in the local community, willingly sharing his talents and expertise with others, illustrated through the past and present involvement, serving on boards of many organizations, usually as the president, and including, as I mentioned, Lakewood Rocky River Rotary, the Music School Settlement, Business Advisors of Cleveland, Gardeners of Greater Cleveland, the Cleveland Orchestra on the Heritage Committee, Cleveland Chamber of Commerce, Leadership Cleveland, Northeast Ohio Savings and Loan League, Neighborhood Housing Services, Meals on Wheels, a Eucharistic minister at St. Bernadette's Catholic Church, Parmac Chamber of Commerce, Cleveland Council of World Affairs, and many, many, many more. He thrives on being active, and he tires me out just reading this thing. <laughs> he says he's retired, but you don't see him slowing down. Mike can be involved in the community any more than he already is. Mike is a man of many accomplishments. Besides being a civic, civic spirited leader, Mike is a highly successful builder, businessman, accountant, banker, and investor. Generosity is one of his finest qualities, and in our shining nature as human beings, he represents the best that we have to offer. When we share the best with one another, we make the community a better place. Generosity is what Mike Busta shares with the abundance. Mike's three sons are here tonight. Michael, who's a CPA and handles all the family investing and taxes. William, who is well known as the owner of the William Busta Gallery. And Paul, who offers his expertise in the mortgage banking business. Michael, William, and Paul have each shared a tribute to their dad in your program book. Please take the time to read that. It is a testimony to the fact that they have learned to be generous from their parents. They have learned that they need to give back to the community, and they do with great gusto. Gentlemen, would you mind standing for a round of applause? Mike and Paul. Well, Mike has told us very often that what makes him the most proud and gives him big satisfaction is that his children are just as involved in caring for their communities, their schools, their churches as he is. So it looks like that embedded spirit of giving runs deep down into the DNA. Mike exemplifies Christian out servitude in his community. As a donor, he's a shining example of illuminating hope. A tremendous example of one has, who has practiced charitable and social responsibility to help meet community needs in the presence and in the future. Organization, he organizes the best of what philanthropy really means, and he epitomizes and reflects the very best of what our community to be great. God, God bless you for every reason to bless you. You are a shining example of illuminating hope in our community. Your continued philanthropic works are a source of admiration. You hold an incredibly special place in our hearts. And if you would come up and accept the award, Mike, we'd be indeed grateful.
I'm, on, I'm honored to give you the 2014 Art of Caring Award, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, when I saw this picture over here, I kept looking at it, and I was wondering if they're going to raffle off that house. <laughs> And then, then I looked at it very carefully. I said, you know, that's the first house I built for my wife and myself 65 years ago. It's still standing. <laughs> and Jim Gallup painted a beautiful picture of it, and I'm very proud that, uh, to have it. And uh, what we did, we moved in that house, and Michael was born. We, mo we were married in January, moved in about September, and Michael was born there. And then a, a year later, Billy was born there. And then we decided we need a bigger house. So I built another one for my wife and family. And then Paul came along the next year. And we lived in that one for about five years. This one about two or three. And then I built a great big house in Brecksville. And my wife said, why do we have to get new houses? I said, well, we don't have to redecorate. <laughs> You get, we just get new houses all the time, and I think that's the way our life is going to go on. And I've had a number of new ones after that. But, you know, this award that I'm getting, I consider it a family award because my family is very dear to me. And I'd like to introduce my children one by one and just tell a little bit about them. If you know, it comes from my heart. I know David covered quite a bit of it. But Mike, why don't you stand up and I want to tell Michael, my uh, MBA CPA son, and he does my tax returns. <laughs> and I accuse him of specializing in non-deductible items. That just seems to be a specialty. And he says, Dad, I spend more time sorting out your charitable contributions than I do on the entire tax return. So anyway, it does get done. And he and, uh, and his wife, Michael, rather Debbie, Debbie's, rather Michael's wife, Debbie, who died uh, 11 months ago, well, last November, and uh, after a 13-month bout with cancer. She was a noted equestrian, and they supported many of the equestrian organizations. And uh, Michael is a current member of the, uh, uh, was the well, their, their main charity was uh, uh, Colonial Williamsburg, where Mike was a former member of the National Advisory Council and uh, the, the Conservatory of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And Michael's a, pers a person, uh, present member of the Finance Committee. But Debbie was well known in in uh, horsey circles, uh, horticulture circles, and she was a champion equestrian in all the neighboring states of Ohio. And she received many, many awards, and uh, she received the many awards, local and national awards, in her equestrian ability. And she did an excellent job in that, and uh, led a very wonderful life until she passed away last November. Now, Bill, <coughs> Uh, is a noted art dealer in Cleveland. He has one of the finest art galleries in northeastern Ohio. And he supports artists, uh, all local artists, with new works. And he's been doing that for over 25 years. Uh, there was gal the William Buster Gallery created on Prospect Avenue. And I think it's covered in the program exactly what he does. And Bill, like his brother and mother, all have graduate degrees from Case Western Reserve University in their respective fields. So that's Bill. Now the next one is Paul. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're a year apart, so, you know, when, when they went to college, I said, look, go to different colleges and bring something back to the family, because you've been a year apart in elementary school, junior high, high school, but go someplace else. So they did. They, they went to different colleges, and they brought back something special to the family. They all brought back wives. <laughs> 
which, which made it very happy because I have three wonderful uh, uh, daughters-in-laws who, who are very, very talented. And uh, uh, Linda, Paul's wife, has received many awards in addition to, to Tom. She is currently a uh, adjunct professor at uh, M Mount, Mount, Mount Vernon Nazareth College. And uh, sh she was a teacher of the year in uh, uh, Granville, Ohio. And she made many serious trips to Spanish-speaking countries with her classes over the years. And uh, they have uh, grandchildren and uh, great-grandchildren. They have great not great-grandchildren. I have the great-grandchildren. They have the grandchildren. <laughs> Now, Marge Emblem, my friend, who is here with us today, is kind of part of our family. We've known each other for, for a number of years. And she was the uh, former college professor, and she was a, a lecturer at, at, the, uh, at a college in uh, uh, St. Louis, Washington University. And her, she, she has a number of... Uh, uh, outside activities like the Westlake Historical Society and the Garden Club of Westlake. Uh, Paul also, I should have mentioned, was in Who's Who, uh, Who's Who in America in 2003, which was a great honor for him. Now, how I got started on charitable gift annuities, I guess that's why I'm here. My wife Jeannie and I, uh, <laughs> It gave out a lot of to, we're always interested in charities in the 55 and a half years that we were married. She died 10 years ago. And we were uh, always giving to charitable causes. About 20 years ago, I heard a commercial on uh, my car radio for the Cleveland Orchestra about charitable gift annuities. My wife and I were partial to the uh, visual arts and the performing arts at the time. We both studied music and we recognized real talent, I guess much more than we had. So I discussed the charitable gift annuity with my wife and uh, we agreed on a $10,000 gift, a joint gift. So I called the, uh, the number given on the uh, uh, on the radio and uh, agreed to a $10,000 minimum gift. I was not knowledgeable at the time of the mechanics, but soon learned very quickly. I was impressed with the uh, orchestra uh, because I knew many of them from my banking days, uh, the board of directors. And I figured that many of them, uh, they must be set up properly. There were a lot of professionals on the board. The interest rates that they offered could be paid quarterly or semi-annually. The tax advantages and the rates were figured out by actuaries and were based on your age. Your age was considered six months before your birthday and six months after your birthday. They all charities subscribe to the same uh, agency, so you don't get a better deal from one or the other, from one charity to the other, and you can't negotiate the rates. And so I like the uh, everything about uh, this charity. And six months later, we agreed to write to the, to another one with the Cleveland Orchestra. And once, but once you give the money, it's gone. <laughs> There's no hardship or no residual value. But one advantage, you don't have to put anything in your will. They already have the money. <laughs> and they invite you to parties. <laughs> so, they invite your family too. Okay, now in charitable giving is a very personal thing. But I personally feel that giving to, should be to your, your extended family first. Now, uh, there you should give for uh, personal gifts, for birthdays, Christmas, and so forth. And you should anticipate special needs. And don't discriminate from one against the other. Now, we all heard about the shoemaker's children's shoes with holes in them. You know, you know that they, they take care of everybody else but their own family. But I, I believe take care of your family first. And before making requests, take a good look at, at your younger families 
who might have desires rather than needs. <laughs> they might want something very big or something, but there's all kinds of things you can give money for and you should anticipate the needs, which I think I do. Now, college degrees and graduate degrees are needed uh, to, to compete professionally in today's society. And that's when children have the least amount of money and need it the most. Now, what I look for in charitable contributions. Uh, this isn't anything special, but this is what I look for. What people are involved, are any of them known to me? I look at that first. The purpose of the charity. Who benefits? It shouldn't be self-serving. Now, a lot of, there are a lot of self-serving charities out there. Movie actors seem to have them. They like to have their picture taken, <laughs> given a check to something. <laughs> now, many of your charities are self-serving, and you have to be very careful. Now, the expense ratio for running a charity should run between 12 and 15 percent. And, uh, but some of them, uh, that I don't know anything about and I won't contribute to them, they run as high as 96%. No, they don't give very much to the charity, but they, they seem to collect a lot of money. And I like to look to how long have they been in business and the history of, of or are they just news? New. Are they for the benefit of Northeastern Ohio? That, that is something that I look for, but I get solicited from people in California and Kansas and Montana, but I don't know anybody there. <laughs> <laughs> and how do they get their funding? From foundations, our personal gifts. Foundations are a very good source. And I also look to see if they have volunteers. Now many people give time, which is more important than money. Uh, something that may have touched my life and perhaps my family's life, colleges, like the Rotary, the local things here, and uh, is it a 501c3 corporation approved by IRS so you get a tax deduction from it? <laughs> now, how Community West Foundation has helped me. Now, Community West Foundation fit perfectly into my plans. I was first introduced to them Oh, by uh, Lee Elmore, the director of the North Coast Health Ministry. It's North Coast Health right now. And they take care of people 64 and under uh, who have no insurance. And they do operate with a lot of volunteers. Well, they had a breakfast meeting at the Lakewood Country Club, and I was invited. They sent out many invitations regarding charitable gift annuities. And I was the only invitee that came. <laughs> and they had representatives from North Coast Health Ministry and the Community West Foundation, and they gave a very good presentation. And there are a lot of nonprofits that do good work without the wherewithal, the support, and can guarantee payments if you open up a Community West Foundation. And I found that going there and listening to the pitch by the Community West Foundation, that I could run these charities through the Community West Foundation. And it was the same thing. So that was a perfect fit to me because I had charities that didn't have much money, such as Beck Center, uh, the Gardeners of Greater Cleveland, uh, uh, the, the uh, Lakewood, well, Lakewood Rock and Rotary does have somebody, but Business Advisors of Cleveland, and uh, uh, there, was, there were other small charities that, that, that they need the money, but they may not exist after a short period of time. But Community West Foundation will. And uh, I was very impressed with them. So that was a perfect fit for me. I like the management and people involved. I uh, met uh, Linda, Linda Spencer, Dan Roth, and uh, Chairman William Baker, who I all got to know personally, and the fine leadership by President David Dambrico. And many of the board members were known to me and are present in this room today. And they also support many of the charities that I support. And there are big foundations in Cleveland, like the Cleveland Foundation, which has $2 billion. 
The Gunn Foundation has over 500 million, and the Community West Foundation that has over 100 million dollars. So none of these are going to go out of business. I was invited to the annual meeting and got the insight into the organization, and they support mostly West, the Community West Foundation, for its mostly West Side charities and uh, Northeastern Ohio charities, and that was good enough for me. And they were, are also a very good source of uh, investigating charities that I know nothing about. Now, what do I do with all this money that I got from these charitable gift annuities? Because I get checks every quarter. Because the number of checks I receive each quarter, I find it most helpful to use uh, a bank checking account, a direct, de a separate checking account with direct deposits. I'm an old bean counter, that's what they used to call accountants years ago anyway, that uh, you, I don't want to co-mingle funds because I couldn't sort them out after a while. So what I do is I have separate checking accounts for charitable contributions, for gifts to the family, for investments, and for household things. And I even have a separate checking account to take money out of my IRA to meet the annual distribution that's required by law. In the future, if I'm ever in, so, so far I haven't used any of this money for myself. But in the future, if I ever need any money, it's there for me for the rest of my life. Because I get checks every single quarter, and they all go in this special account. But when I get a request for a charity I like, I can write a check immediately. Most of my checks are, uh, on these checks are partially uh, tax-free for state, city, and federal income tax until I reach the amount of the gift. Then it's all taxable. Uh, there are other uh, small contributors. There are other small contributors make up a total of a large amount. I'm a small contributor. I usually give $1,000 or less other than charitable gift annuities, which are uh, uh, usually $10,000 or more. more. Uh, mine generally run from ten dollars to $20,000. Other than $1,000, uh, gifted from uh, my IRA account, I told you about that. Uh, there are volunteers, I figure, are more important than money. With volunteers, many of these charities could not exist. Many people give of their time and expertise to charities on a regular basis. So many charities calculate the hours spent by people if they had to pay them, and considered it as a contribution, as a giving asset, and deducted as a liability. Small contributors such as myself, added together, make up a large amount. Now, there won't be any buildings, roads, highways, or whatever you want to call it, named after us small contributors. But we all feel that what we do can make a big difference. What my personal benefits I have received. I get income and tax advantages. A personal satisfaction that what I am doing may make a difference in the lives of others in our community. Perhaps to share in what the charity is currently doing and the future of the charity. And I get personal satisfaction. Now, financially, I made some good good choices in my life, and yes, I made some not such good choices in my life, and those I regarded as a learning experience. Fortunately, the good choices outnumber the not so good choices. <laughs> now, now, what little I do will make a difference. In my life, I have received many blessings, and I feel good about myself. I'll be 90 next month, and my seventh great grand yeah, I never thought I'd live this long. Anyway, my seventh great grandchild will be with us soon. Now, charitable gift annuity is not a not a personal investment, but it's an investment in our community where we grew up, where we were educated, and made whatever fortune we have. I take pride that my extended family 
or continuing on the course I may have established, it all makes living to 90 for me worthwhile. That's it.